Alright, hello there, it's John from Nickthin Gaming, and today I am going to show you how to implement Iron Source into your Unity project in 2024. Now, this is a big thing because the previous videos don't work because it doesn't talk about how Iron Source has updated, but they've updated to a section that does not work. And I'm going to go through all of the issues with you, such as the uh, Win32 exception. Um, that's pretty well solvable by now. Uh, but we also have things like uh, this, release duplicates classes. We have a thing that is um, you need to upgrade your um, editor to be, there we go, to be... Um, API level 34 to work with uh, Iron Source 7.7. .7. Uh, but if you've noticed, even though you can update to Iron Source 7.7, .7, you cannot actually use Iron Source 7.7, .7, which is the latest version. And Unity does not allow you inside of Unity to downgrade back to a version that is usable. Now the latest Unity version that I have used is 7.4.0. But we have uh, 7.5 and 7.6. They may be usable, but 7.4 is the one that works best. I will show you where to go to get 7.4. I'll show you how to add it to your Unity project, what to do, and if you are like me and you already have a broken version of Iron Source in your project, I'm going to show you how to fix that. And we'll also talk about how to do it from a fresh start too, but we will start off with a built project already. Now, as you see, I have ads mediation in my project. I've got my broken iron source. I'm getting errors. In this case, I'm getting the duplicate error. Um, now, if you've been trying to implement iron source and you've tried a few different builds of iron source, you'll start getting a duplicates error even if you delete your iron source assets folder, which it's really annoying because you would hope Iron Source is able to handle these things, but it's not. Now, to do this, you want to actually close your project, but you need to go into your project. You'll need to delete Iron Source, delete the mobile deployment, delete the plugins, and go into your main project folder and delete your library because in your library, that's where Iron Source is putting all of its dependencies. So if you put two Iron Source packages like 7.5, 7.7, and so on, two or more, then you will need to actually delete your entire library's folder, um, which is just built when you open Unity. So I've never noticed anything bad about that. If you do, please let me know in the comments. That's something I would love to be able to look more into if it is actually an issue for other people. Um, but okay, so first we need to get to deleting things. So I'm just going to right click anywhere, even on my assets, go show in Explorer, and it's going to show me my stuff in Explorer. Next thing, I'm actually going to close my Unity editor because we do want to refresh everything with the new open from the Unity Hub. Now, one of our fixes for the Win32 um, error is to go into a temp folder, but you'll notice the temp folder only exists while Unity is open because it's temp stands for temporary. So what we want to do now, because I have multiple versions of Iron Source inside of this, I'm actually going to delete my entire library. Now, sometimes it may say that you lack the required permissions to do this. Um, and if you do have a permissions error when you go to delete your library, um, I was able to fix that by just um, 
restarting the computer. There are countless reasons why you would not be allowed to delete a folder on your computer and countless fixes for it. So that is way outside of the scope of this video and I recommend if you do have that issue, um, leave a message in the comments or do some research yourself. Okay, now next I go to my application name. I've named this game Level Play. I've gone into the Assets folder. I selected Iron Source, Dependency Resolver, Plugins, and their meta files. And I'm just going to delete all of them. So if you are starting this tutorial from a project where you already tried to implement Iron Source, you need to delete your library and delete the three folders that we just talked about. Otherwise, you are going to get that duplicate class error, which I just talked about. Okay, now that those are deleted, we can actually go and open our Unity again. Now, this is also where the users who are starting from a fresh project can join us. So, if you're starting from a fresh project, there are some settings that you want to click when you start a new project. First, please, please update to the latest Unity Hub and use a recent or newest long-term service editor version. I will be using 2022.3.5 F1. To follow along with this tutorial, you should at least have Unity 2022. Um, with 2023 and eventually 2024, I cannot speak to how well this will work in those. Perhaps by the time those are actually in long-term service publication, we will be able to use the latest versions of Fireplay and the latest Android API, I hope. Um, and I'm using the Unity Hub 3.7. If you have a previous version and you don't see these options, please update. If you're using a later version and they've removed these options, then it should be okay. So what I do is I scroll down after selecting which one I want. It doesn't matter which core you use, but you do need to select your cloud organization um, and that will automatically connect it to your Unity Cloud. If you don't have this, you want to go to the Unity website and create an account. And that would just be with the account that you're using for uh, your Unity license. And when you are creating your project, you don't need to connect to Unity Cloud or use Unity version control. Um, just select an organization and you're good to go from there. Now, if you're like me and you deleted those folders and you're reopening your Unity project, you might see this mobile dependency resolver required and we definitely do not want to import that at this time, so I'll just click cancel. And if you see that pop up, it's because in your package manager, package manager packages Unity registry you did not remove the ads mediation. Now you want to also just click remove and remove. You want to also make sure that your advertisement legacy is removed as well. And I recommend installing the Android log cat. So what the log cat does is the Android log cat while you have your Android device connected to your computer with the oh gosh it's the USB debugging which you can activate um, by double clicking your build settings going into the developer settings and then just activating the allow USB debugging which is something you can easily just look up on your favorite uh, web browser okay but yeah so I recommend installing Android LogCat. That's um, going to tell you everything that's happening on your Android device and even tell you what is happening inside of your application. 
still wants me to import mediation or um, Android Resolver, but at this time we still do not want to do that. Okay. So now I've got Logcat open. Um, a thing that you can do if you haven't linked your project, um, if you're using an older version of Unity or you just decided not to link it, then you'll see a screen like this where you just select your organization and you click create project ID. When you do this, it's now going to show up in your Google or in your Unity console in your web browser. You can see it by clicking the um, dashboard item and you should decide if your application or game will primarily target children under the age of 13. I'm just going to click no. It's much easier that way. You do need to be careful with the iron source advertisements um, because iron source advertisements does not care about the clientele that you are sending your advertisements to. Meaning it will send advertisements based on the country and not based off your audience. Which means if you're in Asian countries, they may show highly inappropriate advertisements to small children. And to do that, um, just use Unity Ads or any of the other ad sources instead of Iron Source. Um, but that, of course, is also outside of the scope of this tutorial. Okay, so now that we've got everything clear, we've removed the ads mediation, we don't have anything else in the package manager, we do not want to add anything from the package manager anymore because that stuff is highly broken, especially if you've updated anything. Um, another thing to say is in your project settings, in the player settings, we have the other settings and you want to scroll down. Now, this tutorial is for releasing an Android build on the Google Play Store. And in order to do that, you need to set your project settings, player, other settings, configuration scripting backend to IL2 CPP and you will need to select oh my where has it gone that's fine so the reason I'm not seeing the options I need is because like a dunce when I um, deleted the library it set my build to Windows Mac Linux so I'm going to select Android I'm going to click switch platform and now I can do the stuff while we're here in the build settings we do want to build the app bundle and I am terribly sorry I should have been telling you where to find these menus because I just have them docked right now you can find the build settings in file build settings you can also open it by pressing Control shift b for the project settings you would go edit project settings and you can open your project settings there i like to dock my build settings and project settings just because i use them so many times okay well now we've switched over to android if you're building your app bundle to the google play store you want to select the build app bundle. We don't need the symbols zip or anything like that. But okay, in our player, here we go. So, player, other settings, configuration, scripting backend, set it to IL2 CPP, and select the ARM64. According to Unity specifications and the Google Play, you do not need ARM v7. However, I have never been able to build an IL2 CPP app bundle without having ARM v7 selected as well as ARM64. So it's one of those things that Unity just has not got around to fixing. 
which is the reason for this entire video. Now, another thing you do want is you want to create a key store manager, but we do not want to do that until the end because one of the main errors you can get is from typing an incorrect key store password. Many people have had that error um, while I was going through this process and looking through different forms. So I recommend saving your key store for right before you're about to publish and write it down somewhere safe. I don't recommend storing anything for your Unity on an electronic device because electronic devices are highly insecure. The safest thing would be to store it in a physical medium such as a piece of paper that you can keep in a safe location. Now while we're in the player publishing settings, we do want to select the custom main manifest, the custom Gradle properties template, because we need to add some um, pieces to those in order to get this to work. Okay, now we are going to work on adding um, iron source to our project. Now, unfortunately, Unity does not allow you to downgrade your iron source after you've updated it. So in order to do this, we go to github slash ironsource dash mobile slash unity dash sdk slash tree slash master. And then you see all of their um, old SDKs. So we have 6.10, which would be the oldest release that you can access from three years ago. But we're going down almost all the way to the bottom. And we're going to download 7.4.0. To do that, you just click 7.4.0 click on this and then there's a little download raw file and you want to download that. Now after it's downloaded you'll see your iron source integration manager 7.4.0 unity package. Make sure that you did download the unity package. Um, if you followed along you definitely should receive a unity package. Now there are many ways to add the Unity package to your Unity editor, but I find the easiest way is to just double click it and it will try to import the package in the last Unity editor that you had selected. So if you're working on five projects at once, this will try to import Iron Source into the last project you clicked. Um, but if you have, you know, your project that you want to add level play to, then as the last one selected or the only one open, then that's what you want. Now we want everything here selected and we're going to click import. Now this time when we import it, we do want to install the mobile's dependency resolver and click import. If you said ignore do not ask again during this session, there are ways around it, but the easiest way to get back to where you can press import is to close your Unity editor and then reopen it. But I'm going to click import. It's going to take just a second, and then we'll see the iron source and the uh, mobile dependency resolver add to my project. All right, and it's added, and right away we see the resolving Android dependencies screen pop up as it's trying to auto-resolve, and it's stuck at 0%. If you go into your console, which should be docked, if it's not, we can go to Windows and possibly General. Yes, there it is, Console or Control-Shift-C. Now, the console says Win32 exception. This is a well-known exception 
Unity knows about it, Iron Source knows about it, my grandma knows about it, but Unity refuses to fix it. Now, to fix it, you must have your Unity open, and you must do this every time you reopen your project, which is quite annoying, so possibly even um, cr add your file in the main section and then copy it over to the temp. And that's what we're going to be doing. So level play is the name of my project. I'm going to right click in here. I'm going to do a new text document. And right away I'm going to delete everything. Type gradle dot gradle w dot b a t. That's g r a d l e dot b a t. I'm going to press enter. My Windows is going to say, hey, you're renaming a file extension. It might become unusable. I'm going to say, yeah, I want that. Then I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go to edit. If you can't do this, just delete the file, open it as a text document, put the text in here, and then rename it later to GradleBat. Make sure you remove the .txt at the end, otherwise it's going to be GradleBat.txt and it's not going to work. Now, for the content that we put in here, it's actually provided by Google. So Google is well aware of this issue and they just don't care enough to fix it. It's all about money. So I will include the link for this in the description of this video, as well as all of the other links, such as the um, GitHub that we went to earlier. Now let's go over and I will show you how to create this file because it can be a bit confusing for those of you who don't know how to edit bat files. All right, so here is the file. It's at raw GitHub user content, com, Google samples, unity jar resile for master gradlew.bat. Gradle.w.bat is the name that you must have on this file in order for it to work, and it will look like this. Start with the debug echo off and end with the omega. To select it, I'm just going to click anywhere inside of this and press Control A. If you don't like Control A or you have a mini keyboard, you can do a long select like that. As long as you have everything selected and did not leave anything off. Now I'm going to copy it with Control C or right click copy. And we're going to go back. I'm going to paste it into my notepad by pressing Control V or by right clicking and going to paste. Please don't paste it twice. That's going to give you an issue. Next, I'm going to save it. Control S if you don't know how to save files or file save. Now we can safely close it I'm actually going to copy this folder now, uh, or this file, because when we put it in the temp and we close our Unity, it will, the entire temp folder is deleted. So let's open temp. You should see a Play Services Resolver Gradle. If you don't, then that means you do not have your mobile dependency resolver in your project. If you do have your mobile dependency resolver and you don't see the Play Services Resolver Gradle in your temp folder, then you need to delete your mobile dependency resolver, close your Unity, open it up again, and it should import correctly. If it still does not, then check your Unity version, because Unity has many tiny errors like that. Okay, now go to Play Services Resolver Gradle. You'll see all of these. We see we have a Gradle W file, but we need a Gradle W bat. So I'll just paste it in there. If you don't want to do the copy and pasting, you can just create the empty text file and create it all here. But okay, once we're done with that, we're fine to close it. I'm going to right click anywhere in my project folder and I'm going to click re-import. Now when I re-import, it's also going to want to reload my scene. Um, as you see, I have an unsaved, untitled scene. So I might need to switch over to an open scene or a saved scene. Okay, but it looks like it did not. And we finally have the Android dependency resolving all the way and we see it's creating the plugins now. 
if you get stuck at 100% with your resolving Android dependencies. That can be because you used a version of Iron Source that is too new, if you did not delete your libraries properly. Um, there are countless reasons why the resolver does get stuck at 100%, but getting stuck at 100% does mean that it did not actually finish. And you have an error somewhere, and I recommend checking your version, your Unity editor version, making sure it's a 2022 long-term service release. Check your iron source, make sure it's 7.4 or earlier. Um, you definitely cannot do this with 7.7 7, um, at the time of this video. And um, just pretty much try again. If you do try again from an empty thing, and it's still not working, let me know. We can go over the steps. Okay, but yeah, we see that it resolved just fine and everything is working. Now we can go into Iron Source demo scene. I'm going to go to my Iron Source demo and we can see that it's just this. But if I click the play button, it's going to take a moment and we see this beautiful scene by Iron Source. I don't know how they came up with such an amazing design, but we have all of these uh, buttons that will help us test Iron Source. We see Load Banner, Load Interstitial, and you notice that none of them work while you're just playing the game, and that's because it will not work without building it to a device. So I recommend taking your Android device plugging it into your computer, like I just did, and then go to um, Project Settings, Editor, to the top, Device, any Android device, Run Device, we'll need to click Refresh, Samsung is my device, and then I'm going to click Build and Run. Now, for this, I'm just going to name it test. And I will start building it, and it's going to take a moment. When it's done building, it's going to open in my phone, and this is a perfect time for us to use our Android Log Cat. So let's come back when this is done building, and you should not have any issues building if you're able to resolve everything perfectly. All right, so it has built. Um, if you see, it did take almost 10 minutes for me to build this. Um, your builds will get faster, especially if you just do a normal build and not a build and run. Um, but for testing, we do want to do a build and run. Um, just because we want to be able to test it on our phone and this does not work on um, normal play mode. Okay, um, so what we want to do now is we want to open our log cat and our log cat will be in the uh, Windows mode under under analysis. So we see it and we can click the Android log cat. You can also open it by typing alt 6. I recommend docking it somewhere below. And I'm going to go from no filter to my level play. You'll see a list of all of the applications you have open on your phone and this is just useful for telling you everything that's going on in your um, app. You'll see some errors like um, set timer slack, um, not permitted, possibly depending on your device, but that has nothing to do with um, level play or getting it to actually work. Now if you scroll down, you'll see these um, ad colony, app lovin, apps, things like that, saying that your adapter is missing and you would just get those by going to your integration manager. Um, and yeah, we see that we don't have any adapter version for these. 
I do recommend um, going and not installing the latest adapter version because more often than not the latest adapter version in Unity does not actually work. Um, and so you might need to do some testing and see um, which adapter version you need to get if you want to implement the other ones. But I'm just showing you Iron Source in this video and you'll see that they're all missing but the Iron Source which is the most um, important one for us is verified and showing. And then at the very bottom we start to get to the actual things. So when I click my load banner, we see that I'm loading the banner and in our Android, as we can see, the demo uh, banner has popped up. We can click destroy banner. We can load an interstitial, which is gonna take a second and then it will load an interstitial ad when we click show interstitial. There we go, there's our interstitial ad. Um, and if you don't know, an interstitial ad is um, one that's going to show up every few seconds in your app. We also have the show reward video, um, which is very useful if you want to reward or um, like um, allow them to use an option you know any basic unlocking or providing of um, a service so all of those work um, we're not doing the offer wall but we can click on it and see what happens and it doesn't look like the okay there we go yeah so offer walls not popping up but um, it doesn't pop up naturally from iron source but we do see that my um, banner interstitial and reward video are opening and loading and showing but that is a far cry from it actually working in your app and having it working in a published version but we do see that um, the basic of iron source is working so now we'll go back to the computer and we will um, continue working on getting it so we can create our own iron source with buttons and things like that to get it to load I'm going to show you the scripts that you need to get things working and all of that now before we start adding those settings we do want to go to assets mobile dependency resolver Android resolver to our settings and make sure that your patch main template Gradle is selected your other settings should look like this use Gradle daemon um, daemon enable auto resolution um, whatnot all selected with um, and make sure patch main template Gradle is also selected if you make any changes make sure you press OK and not the close button otherwise it's not saved now when that's done we need to right click show in explorer and we want to go to my or you you want to go to your um, assets folder go to your plugins your Android and if you select it in your project settings under player to use a custom main manifest and a custom Gradle properties template then you should see these in your uh, project project folder now we're going to take this and I'm going to show you another website that you want to go to which is the iron source knowledge center and you do not need um, an iron source um, account at this time we will need it later um, but I will take you through those steps too now the first thing is we need to add this uses permission to our I believe it's our Android manifest I'm going to right click it and click edit which should open it in my notepad 
and right here above application under XMLNS tools, we are going to copy the uses permission and paste it. Then we want to save it. The next thing we want to find is we want to find the Gradle template properties. I will right click that as well. I'm going to go to open with notepad and right here where it says additional properties or underneath it, we're going to paste the Android enable dexing artifact transform false. Now you don't need to copy and paste. You can type these out like I um, just make sure that you spell everything exactly. And then we want to save that as well and close it. And we are done with those steps. Now we are at the point where we are ready to start connecting this to our iron source and our Unity developer console. So the next thing you want to do is you want to go back to your Unity project to ads mediation, developer settings, and level play mediation settings. And we see that it's asking for the Android app key. We do need that in our script as well. And to get this, we need to create a project on Iron Source. And at this time, you do not need to publish it, but you will need to make a publication and then um, activate it in your Iron Source. And we'll talk about all of that soon. All right, so now you want to go to your Iron Source platform. I will include a link here. Um, to get here, you do need to create an Iron Source account. Um, and that's uh, just fill in a form. Totally free to use. It's going to take a bit to actually um, verify your account. And you may need to send them an email over a week or so because they take a long time to get back to activate your account. Um, to activate your, to have an Iron Source account, you do need a credit card. So you, or you need a bank account to receive the money in. Now you can get this by going to the bank or using a family member. Um, now you can click new app because we want to add a new app now. Now it says live app. Our app is not yet live. At least mine is not. If you do have a live app, you know, that you're adding um, Iron Source to, this is where you would paste your Google Play URL, the link to the Google Play Store for the game. And it's going to um, take all of that data from the Play Store. But if you don't, that's perfectly fine. We'll click App Not Live. Give it a temporary name, which I will call Level Play. Select the platform. We're building this for Android and not iOS. When you create another one, you do need to create a new um, app for the iOS. Or we want to do a new setup and not duplicate from a duplicate from another as, uh, application and you say what your audience is. Now, for apps that are directed towards children, Iron Source has actually said that you should use a mixed audience, but um, like I said before, Iron Source shows advertisements based on the country and not based on the audience. So if you are in places, especially places like Asia, where they have more lax advertisement standards, even if you are directing it towards children or a mixed audience, it is still highly likely to display not exactly pornographic, but highly inappropriate advertisements to your audience. Um, some of the advertisements I've received are um, like doctor's advertisements or male enhancements, um, alcohol, things like that, that you really don't want to see. Now we have some US state privacy laws and I like to just say um, 
do not sell to all users. This kind of keeps you safe in um, when you're giving your apps to California, Connecticut, Colorado. If you're not showing um, your apps in America, then this really doesn't matter. But you do, do still need to select one of them. But okay, now we'll go to Add App. And I want, and we see our app key here, which I will copy now. Uh, you can just double click, Control C, right click, copy one of those. We're going to turn on one of these. Um, and to activate the offer wall, your account needs to be approved. My account is approved, but I still can't turn it on. I'm not going to use interstitial just because people do not like interstitial ads. Interstitial ads are advertisements that will play um, every few seconds, which is really not good. So I'm just doing the reward video and the banner for this. I'll click continue and now we've got everything loaded. And we see that it's up here. We can set up the Unity ads if you want to add those, but you will need to go through the Unity ad um, adding process, which you need to make sure that you have um, a working adapter, which can be pretty difficult. And you can set them to active. Um, you can say if you want to use the test mode, when you publish this, you do need to have the test mode off in order to get actual advertisements playing. But the main thing is our app key. So now let's go back to our Unity now that we have our app key. And back in Unity, um, again, if you don't have your mediation settings open, that's just Ads Mediation Developer Level Play Mediation Settings. This is actually a, um, gosh, I forget what they're called. Um, <laughs> I make them, but I forget. But it is in your Iron Source Assets, Iron Source Resources folder. And then you just paste the app key in there. Um, don't need to save it or anything, but pressing Control S is always nice. The next thing we want to do is we want to go to the new Cloud Unity, um, which I will include a link in um, the description of this video. And we want to add to this. Now, if you add in-app purchases, you would add your super long key here, but we don't have that yet. We actually want to go to the Unity Ads monetization. If you don't have any shortcuts, just press the Add Shortcuts and type in Monetization and you'll see it. And then um, it will add and you select it. And we want to go to Enable Ads. And now we can say what we plan to use. We're going to be using Mediation. And Mediation is um, pretty much Level Play. And then select which one we're using. We're just going to say Unity Level Play click next. Um, no, I want to start fresh unless you have add settings from another project, but if you're watching this video, you probably don't. The next one we have bidding and traditional waterfall. What waterfall says is it says it will sell to company A. If company A doesn't want it, it goes to company B, company C, company D until it runs out of companies that want to give you ads. We want to go with bidding, which will look at every company at once and pick the company willing to offer the best price for watching the ad. And the money that you make per ad greatly depends on which country is watching the ad. If now this may not be accurate anymore, but in the past, um, the advertisements was um, f for every 1,000 ads that someone in a first world country like America or Great Britain watches, you would get $20. And 
every advertisement that someone watches in a non-trusted country, such as the countries in Asia where they're well known for their um, hacking and lying and scamming, um, then you would get like 50 cents or 20 cents for every 1,000 ads. And it's understandable those are the countries where people are more likely to, um, statistically more likely to uh, fake watching ads. Okay, yeah, I'm going to select bidding. I recommend you do too. We go to next. Now, if it's listed in the Google Play Store, you would add your Apple Store URL in your Google Play Store, but I'm just going to say it's not live yet, and I will show you where you can add that later when you do publish it. Okay, but we're creating it. And now we have our core ID, our game ID. We do want to um, copy these. So before we click finish, let's go back. Also, if you are adding um, Unity ads, this is where you would get your game ID from. So you would just copy the game ID here, go to Iron Source, paste it here. We don't have the placement IDs yet, but I'll show you about that if you're interested in using Unity ads. So we go, you know, even um, save these in a file somewhere. You can print the instructions to keep it. But I'm just going to go to Finish, and we see everything loading and it's got a little thing here for the first time you go through it. Alright, so from the project overview you can go to placements and you see um, your different ads here. Now this is for adding Unity ads. We'll just go over it while I'm here. We have the reward video interstitial and banner and you need the placement IDs for those. So click reward and we want to make sure that we have the rewarded Android, which is right underneath the Android. We copy the ID. If you're adding iOS, this is where you would get the iOS one, but we're doing Android. Then you go over, you place the ID, then we go to interstitial, that's interstitial here. Copy the Android one, place it here. If you want a banner for Unity ads, you do need to add a new ad unit. Now for that you just give it a unit name which I will call um, banner underscore ad. You can give it any name. Platform would be for Android. The type is going to be banner. We're going to click create. We need a placement name. I'm going to call it banner ad. Um, placement. We're going to add a placement, copy that ID that you just typed, and place it here. So you can select the countries that you want, and then we will click Save. And now we would also actually have our Unity Ads active. Um, that way you have Iron Source and Unity Ads for your bidding to choose from. Okay. Now, we should be ready to go back to our Unity and actually get started on some scripts to get things working, which is great. To create a scene uh, where you can kind of see it, we can do, um, let's create a UI image. This is just going to be a background image. We'll have fill up the whole screen on the canvas so we can see things. We're going to scale with screen size, make it expand. And let's actually go back to that image and make it a bit easier to look at with the slight gray. Then on the canvas, we want to add a UI uh, button. And for the button, I'm just going to make it a smidge bigger, about 300 by 100. And it's going to say, um, show reward. Okay, and we'll even have a little text box. So UI Text Mesh Pro, which is, uh, we'll just call it text for now. It's gonna be at zero. I'm gonna have it auto size. 
maybe even emboldened. And I'm just going to set that up at the top and make it a bit bigger, centered. Okay, save that. Now we go into our scripts, and instead of writing them with you, I'm just going to go over some scripts with you. So first, we have a level play controller. This is the only one you need. However, I like to separate my level play connector, not controller, and my scene controller. Um, so with my level play controller, or actually connector, you can see that I've made it into a singleton by writing by typing public static level play controller instance and then in the awake I say if instance is equal to null set the instance to this and don't destroy this game object that the script is attached to otherwise if the instance is not the first instance that we used then we need to destroy all of the other instances of game objects with the script attached um, what this says is we have a game object in the unity scene that game object has a level play controller script attached to it. Anytime we change scenes, we want that game object and the script to move with us so we aren't loading our um, level play iron source every single time we change scenes. We want to keep that loading um, thing going instead of reloading. And so that's what this says, is it uh, preserves it across scenes. Now, we also want our app key. This is going to be the same app key in your ads mediation level play mediation settings right here. So we just make a serialized field app key like this. Uh, you can also make it public or private if you want. I use serialized field so it can't be edited outside of the app and I can still change it quickly. I like to use this callback for my rewards I will talk more about that later, but first let's go into our um, integration and setting up the iron source. Now, to get iron source to work, we need these two things iron source.agent.validate integration, and then iron source agent init or initialize, and we send our app key to it. Other things we want is we want the on enable. So this is when our script is enabled. So for that we say iron source events on SDK initialization completed event and your Unity will be able to, or your um, Visual Studios should auto complete this if you just type on SDK. And we're going to pass in this SDK initialized function where we just say that the iron source SDK has been initialized. The other thing that you need to have is on application pause. This will be automatically completed for you as well, where we say iron source agent on application pause and we send the pause value. On application pause is when the user um, stops or starts again looking at the app. So we're playing the game and then I switch to Facebook on application pause. We're playing the game and I swipe down to turn on my Wi-Fi on application pause. Um, I turn off my phone screen on application pause. I turn on my phone screen and I go back to the app. Then it's pause false. And we just pretty much send that value to Iron Source so it knows how to deal with the advertisements. Okay, um, that's all we need for that. Now, to get into the reward videos. On the website, which I will link in the description, we have these events here, and these are all of the different events that Iron Source calls during the rewarded video. So you can just copy those and paste them, and then they have the methods here, and I'll show you what I did with them. So I just uh, copied and pasted the events, which will call every time an ad is opened, ad closed, things like that, and we'll talk about it. So in my rewards methods, I just debug.log everything here. So on video available means the video is available. Video is unavailable. The ad has been opened and is being viewed. The ad is done viewing and has been closed. Uh, you've finished watching the reward ad and you're ready to receive a reward. Um, your 
video has failed to show for some reason. Maybe you switched to airplane mode, maybe you closed the app, who knows, but it cannot show. And then when you finally click the ad. Now you'll see this callback method. I'll talk to you a little bit about that. I use a unity action with a Boolean value and an integer value for my rewarded callback so I can display and tell other functions that you finished watching the reward video and this is how much you earn from watching the reward video. Um, and you can change this in your iron source setting. So I use this public void show reward which I ask for a unity action and I set my callback to the callback that the use that we send from another function or another class and then I say if the iron source agent is reward video available so can do we have a reward video to watch then I say show reward video make sure you use show reward video and not load reward video because we do have both but load does not work we need show reward video otherwise if we do not have a video available I print that to the log and I send back to the function that calls show reward we did not load a video and you did not get any rewards for not watching that video. Um, now I use my reward callback when the video is unavailable we don't have a video to watch when you get the reward and I say send back true you did watch the advertisement and placement dot get reward amount is how much you've been rewarded and then if the ad failed to show then I just say false and you didn't get anything back so that's how we do the reward it's a bit comprehensive like that but um, not too much next we have the banner events again we get the banner events from the same page but down at banner slash mrec and we see that we want to load banner of the banner size and the banner position banner sizes we see here I like to use the smart banner and you can set it to top or bottom uh, pretty much smart banner as it says would automatically adjust its size for the size of the Android device that you're viewing the banner in and you can set custom sizes too um, but I recommend using either smart or banner okay and then we see the different functions you use load banner to load the banner you use hide banner to hide the banner uh, display banner to display it again we use uh, destroy banner to remove the banner completely and here are our banner events just like the reward video events and I'll go over what I've used here too so we have my show banner method where I say iron source dot agent dot load banner of the size smart and the position bottom and iron source agent destroy banner to destroy the banner now these will not actually work until you have published your app as I said before can't stress that enough um, and then banner on add loaded event just says the banner is loaded uh, banner failed to load and we give the error if you try to run a banner now without publishing your app you will see the you may see the iron source error 606 waterfall empty which means no one was giving you advertisements to display in a banner um, and banner clicked means the user clicked on the banner when you click on the banner it may take you to another screen or say yes this is the app would you like to download it this says that you've dismissed that screen and you've returned to the game and this means that you left the application this is like your on application pause that we talked about before so that's the level plate controller I also added a main screen main scene controller which would work with the main scene so our level play has in the awake 
don't destroy or unload the game object, which means the game object with our level play controller will persist throughout any scene that we transition to. However, this one will be destroyed when we load a new scene because we only want our main scene controller to be in the scene that it is so it connects to our reward text. Now to load the banner I would just call level play controller instance show banner level play controller instance show reward like that destroy the banner I just call the banner function and I like to do this where I separate my main scene controller and my level play connector so that I'm not using many different instances. For example, if I wanted this script itself to connect to level play instead of connecting to my connector here, I would need to go through the whole validation and, initi and initializing process again, which it doesn't take much time at all, um, just a few seconds, but it's still things that you don't need to do. Then I say load reward. This one will actually, should actually work without publishing your ad. And we say, we see that it says show reward. And I use this function here where I say was rewarded and the reward value. And I say that the main scene controller reward has finished. And then I say true or false, was it rewarded? Um, and then the value of the reward, which is the placement value that we see in our reward methods. Get the reward amount in the placement. Then I go to my count up here. So I keep track of how much you've been rewarded uh, just arbitrarily and I add the reward value to it and I say my rewarded text which is that um, little text thing that we showed is equal to the reward count to string. Now um, another thing you can do is if you go to your iron source and if you turn on the test mode it should work, but these are not going to be um, advertisements that you can monetize. They're just testing to make sure it works. So real quick, let's just duplicate this two more times. I'm going to put this one in the bottom left, and I'm going to put this one in the bottom right. This is going to be the delete or sorry, destroy banner and this one is going to be my show banner. Now on my canvas I want to add my actually no, not on the canvas. I will go right here. I'm going to say main scene controller. I will add my main scene controller here and I will drag and drop my text in here for the numbers that we showed earlier. Then I will create another empty. This will be my level play. I want to call it connector now. And I'm going to add my level play controller. We see the app key. Uh, make sure that your app key is correct. And when you do go to publish, about this time would be a great time to go to your project settings, to your player, and create a key store um, so that you can publish on Google Play. You must have Build App Bundle and the key store with two valid key store passwords. And you have to have them entered in order to publish on Google Play. And make sure that you type it exactly otherwise you get an error and you can't build many people have that issue um, they're 100 percent positive they typed it correctly and then they come back five minutes later oh haha <laughs> i didn't type it correctly so be careful with that 
but this is a perfect time for you to uh, start publishing your app to the Google Play Store. Okay, next thing we want to do is we want to go to our buttons. We are going to add an on-click event of the main scene controller. We're going to add the load reward on the show banner. It's going to be the load banner. And on the destroy banner, it's going to be destroy banner. So if we save that and we build and run and go back to our um, Android device, we'll see that we can show the reward and we can look in the logcat where we might get that waterfall issue, but since we have testing active, uh, we might not. All right, so the game is done. Let's um, go into our phone. Make sure you, or go into the logcat. Make sure you have the uh, newest selection, not any of the ones that say exited. We can click show reward, and you see that we actually have a real advertisement running and not just one of the um, level play default ones. So this does work without actually publishing it, which is great. Um, a fun little archer game, quite. And, you know, like we said, uh, the level play does not care about children. Even though I didn't select those, you know, it's still showing very violent ads. Um, and we see that the show reward is fully working. Now, we can load banners, but only because um, we've turned on the test mode for banners. So we see that the demo banner, and we can destroy it too. Now, in here, if we turn off the test mode for the banner and we save it and we go back to our unity if I click show banner it says that the banner failed to load because there's an empty waterfall that just means that no one wants to give you a banner until you publish to the app store and we can even see that my um, count at the top is increasing by one every time the user watches an advertisement. So let's uh, finish this advertisement and that's the end of this. So thank you for watching. I hope that your ads are working now. Um, if you're having trouble with level play, make sure that you're not using the latest versions as of this video because Unity is horribly broken and they love to publish things that don't work in your project settings, in your other settings. Make sure that you're not using, well, try it out first. Make sure that you're not using API level 34 because even though Unity offers API level 34, it still does not work. You cannot actually get it in Unity. Um, or at least I have been unavailable too. So thank you for watching. Have a great day. Good luck with your ads.